Hello, welcome back to the session. Today, we're going to discuss about the troubleshooting and the future of internet session one. All the last few sessions, we've learned about what is networking, what are the types of networking, components required to set up the network, how these devices work, what are the various protocols available for communication, and how to use those protocols. And we have practically demonstrated certain aspects of how a computer can access the remote network with the help of the switch and the routers and the various protocols that we have to enable on the router. We also taken examples of how to access internet by configuring the routers. So what happens if something does not work? There is some situations where a computer may not be able to access internet, it may not be able to access the local server, it may not be able to send a print to the local printer, we are not able to get some access. So how do we troubleshoot these issues? We cannot say a network will work correct all the time. So there will be some issues, some problems. So what are those problems and what are the different types of problems available and how to resolve them or how to address these problems to ensure that your network is running all the time without any issues. So troubleshooting is a very important aspect of networking. So let's look at what is troubleshooting and the different methods of troubleshooting. So it is a method of resolving the network issues. Troubleshooting is a method of resolving the various network issues or problems. So sometimes we may try to access some resources, some web server or something, we don't get the required output. That means there is a problem. So the troubleshooting is a method of first identifying the problem. What is the problem? Why is it not working? Why am I not getting the web page? Okay, so all these are the issues that we have to look into. Identifying the problem is the first step in troubleshooting. Let's take an example of ourselves. Suppose we are not well, where do we go? We go to the doctor. So we go to the doctor when we have some problem, when we have some issue. So similarly, in the network, when something does not work, then the network engineer or system administrator has to address this problem. So the first and foremost thing that when we go to the doctor is he'll ask, what's your problem? And then we explain the problem that we have. And the doctor will diagnose, okay, if this is the problem and this is the medicine to be provided. In a similar way, when something does not work in the network, in an organization network, in a bank or any organization, ISP, etc., if something doesn't work, the technical person, the network engineer, will look at why this problem has come. He has to identify what is the cause of the problem. We call it as root cause analysis. So in the root cause analysis, we'll find out what is the issue, what is the problem, why is it behaving like this. And then there will be a step by stepwise process that we have to follow to address this problem. So this is the solution. So if there is a problem, there is a corresponding solution to it. So troubleshooting is a process of resolving the problems that we have in the network. So let's get back and see what are the different types of issues that are available. So once we are able to identify the problem, then we have the solution available. So based on the problem, we have a different kinds of solutions available. And what are the different types of problems? So we have problems that are related with layer one. We call layer one as physical layer problems, troubleshooting layer one problems. So these are related with physical connections. Maybe the cable is not connected properly, is not fixed to the interface of the computer to the laptop properly or maybe the cable is disconnected or damaged the cable could be damaged so these are the various issues relating to layer one according to the osa model we have discussed that the layer one layer two and layer three are the three important layers relating to networking so in that layer one is physical layer physical layer so we have to 
address these physical layers could be relating with cable disconnection or cable being damaged or cable not being connected properly. These could be the issues for layer 1. Then what kind of problems that exist in layer 2? So in layer 2, the problems could be related to encapsulation and normally this happens on the WAN interface. WAN encapsulation could be one issue. Within the LAN, there could be issues of speed and duplex. Layer 2 problems can be categorized as relating to encapsulation mismatch or relating to speed and duplex. This is the layer 2 problems. Then troubleshooting using the layer 3 issues or layer 3 problems. Now layer 3 related with network layer. Layer, th layer 3 is related with the network layer. Layer 1 is a physical layer, layer 2 is a data link layer, layer 3 is a network layer. So in the network layer, we have components like IP address, IP address relating to layer 3. So IP address issues could be routing protocol issues or it could be kind of providing a wrong IP address as a default gateway because in the TCP IP properties, we have IP address subnet mask default gateway and apart from this we also have dns server so if any of these parameters are not correctly provided i repeat if any of these parameters are not correctly provided be it ip address subnet mask default gateway dns server or the routing protocols that we have enabled on the router if any one of this is an issue then the user may not be able to access internet or the user may not be able to access the remote network. Remember, the parameters that we have to troubleshoot for layer 3 connectivity or layer 3 troubleshooting is IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS server at the computer level. If all these parameters are correct and still you do not get access to the remote network or internet, then we have to troubleshoot on the router. On the router, again we have to troubleshoot relating to the routing protocols. Some of these routing protocols we have done in the last few sessions relating to static routing, relating to the default routing. So we need to check those parameters. So we will be using some of these concepts in our topology that we discussed in the last few sessions and then create some problems. We will remove some information relating to the IP parameters, we will remove the default gateway, we will give wrong subnet mask and then try to access, we will not be able to access. Okay, And then we have the last one and when configuring the routing protocol, it could be you could have given a wrong uh, routing information to the protocol. So these are the various problems for layer 1 and then layer 2 and then layer 3. So we are now going to look at the solution, how to solve these issues, the solution relating to addressing these problems. So troubleshooting layer 1 problem. So we need to check the physical connections to the PC, the LAN cable, is it connected properly? Most computers or laptops have the facility to show that the light is on when we have the connection, the cable connected to the computer the light will be on. So if you see that light, that means there is a connection. You if you in the behind the computer or laptop, when you connect the LAN cable, on that port, there will be light, LED. And if it is glowing green, represent the physical connectivity is okay. So in spite of connecting the cable and we do not get the light, then there could be some problem. Either there is a problem with the jack, there is a problem with the cable or the remote end of the cable which is connected to the switch or to the hub has not been uh, connected properly or another or another situation could be like that switch is powered off. So these are the things that we have to look at in the physical connection issues. And sometimes on the router, the physical cable is connected but the router port is shut down. So we need to verify that particular configuration on the router. And then we also have to look at the switch. So you have to look at the PC, the cable and the switch and the router. These are the three things that we have to verify for the physical layer troubleshooting or layer 1 troubleshooting. So once this is resolved, 
that means the light is on on the computer side that means physical connection is active so we have resolved the layer 1 issues and then layer 2 issues can be resolved by checking the status of the interfaces on the router and we mentioned earlier the problem in layer 2 could be relating to encapsulation and normally we we map this encapsulation for the wan interface of the router not for the lan interface of the router whereas on the lan interface of the router the status of the interface should be checked on the switch and as well on the router so what parameters do we look at for the layer 2 encapsulation is duplex and speed parameters if these are matching the devices connected then the layer 2 status also will be enabled the problem of layer 2 will be resolved if we address the encapsulation on the wan interface and speed and duplex on the lan interfaces so this would resolve the issues at the layer 2 level so once this is resolved so we have set layer 1 troubleshooting and rectified those problems then verified layer 2 issues and rectified this problem and the third one is the layer 3 so layer 3 is relating to the ip parameters the default gateway the dns as well as the routing protocols but if you look at a topology that we have discussed earlier allowing the data from one network to go to the remote network at every stage there are certain things to be checked at every stage of the communication we have to check certain parameters so when the computer which the user is using initiates a request at that computer itself the information relating to layer one which is a physical connectivity or maybe wireless connectivity number two relating to the mac address source mac address and destination mac address and relating to layer three which is ip parameters so all these will be checked right from the source and then the request will be forwarded from the pc to the switch the switch maintains the mac address table it will verify to which port this parameter has to be forwarded or this packet should be forwarded and it will look up in its mac address table where the router is available and then this packet will be forwarded to the router when the router receives the packet the router is a layer 3 device it will open the ip header and check the destination ip address and the packet destination ip address will be compared in the router's routing table router router maintains a routing table switch maintains mac address table so when the routing table is checked for the particular destination if the destination is available then the packet will be forwarded out on the exit interface so if you have to understand this let's take a small picture in this picture we're going to create a small network a quickly small network this is a router and then we have A switch connected here to the router and then we have some devices some PCs connected to the switch at least one or two computers we can consider and then these PCs are connected to the switch and then this router is in turn connected to the remote router in this remote router also we have a switch and few computers connected few computers and we wish to communicate from the local network to the remote network so if you look at if this pc is sending data out to the router if this pc is sending data out this computer is a source this computer is a source this computer is a source he is sending the data out and this computer is a destination so this network would be different this network would be different so when the packet is sent from the pc towards the switch switch will check in its mac address table how to forward this packet to the router 
and the packet will be forwarded based on the MAC address table and the router will verify in its routing table how to forward this data on which interface the destination is reachable. So currently there is only one port available to go to the remote network. So packet gets forwarded, IP packet gets forwarded to the router and then forward this packet from the router to the switch and then from the switch to the PC. So in this process, if there is a fault in the switch or if there is a fault in the router, any of this segment, the source cannot communicate with the destination. So we have in this diagram yesterday, in the last session, we have discussed about how to enable communication. So we were able to communicate from this local PC to the remote router. We were able to communicate along with the public IP address. So you can see there is communication. And if we do a trace route, if we do a trace route, it will show the hop by hop communication. It will show the hop by hop communication, how the packet is traveling from the source to the destination. So this is the first hop for this local computer. The first hop is basically the default gateway, which is the router. We can even check quickly our IP parameters on this computer, IP config and you can see the default gateway. The default gateway on this computer shows 192.168.201.1 and when we try to trace route to the remote device, you can see that the first hop is going to the default gateway and then it is going to the next hop which is the ISP router and then the next hop is going to the actual destination. So this is the communication because all the parameters are correct. So what we do now, we will just go here to the IP parameters and remove the default gateway. We have now removed the default gateway. So if you check the IP config now, the computer does not have the default gateway. And now if you try to communicate with the remote computer, you get a message that request timed out. You get a message request timed out. So sometimes it is possible that the IP parameters may be disturbed either intentionally or through sometimes through DHCP server. If you assign the DHCP to this local computer and the DHCP server does not provide the correct details, correct IP parameters, then also communication is not possible. So this is one way we have to identify the fault. Then you can go to this computer properties and then assign DHCP. So if you assign DHCP and then we come back to the command prompt and check the current IP address of the PC with the command IP config, IP config. So you can see you got a different IP address 169.254.85.134. Normally when your computer is not able to reach the DHCP server, automatically the computer will allocate a IP address in the series called 169.254. This IP is also coming under the private IP address category and then you will not be able to communicate with your remote network. So let us look at that there is no communication to the remote network. So we have to troubleshoot whenever a user complains in the network that he is not accessing the server, he is not accessing the internet we need to check these properties, TCP IP properties, whether the IP address is being configured properly, the subnet mask is configured properly, the default gateway is configured properly, the DNS, suppose if you want to access internet, without DNS we cannot access internet because internet works based on IP address. I repeat, internet works on IP address, not on the domain name. Though we tend to remember the domain name because remembering the name is easier compared to remembering the IP address. So to access internet, you must remember the IP address and which we cannot. So we are good at remembering the names. Suppose you want to communicate with let us say yahoo.com or google.com. We do not know the IP address of that particular web server, but we know the name. So the DNS provides a resolution between the name and the IP address. 
So let's quickly have an example of. So I want to communicate with yahoo.com. Let's say ping www.yahoo.com. So we remember the name. Okay. So there is no internet access. So let's get resolved quickly based on the domain name. In the domain name service, IP to name resolution, name to IP resolution takes place. So, if the DNS is not configured properly or is wrongly configured, we will not be able to access internet. So, DNS is one of the issues that we have to resolve. So, in the layer 3 issues, the IP parameters are the key components and checking the communication from the PC to the router, whether you are able to reach the default gateway or not. This is one troubleshooting we have to perform. Are we able to communicate with the DNS server or not? And sometimes it is possible that two or more devices may have the same IP address and you will find sometimes the conflict, IP conflict or duplicate IP address issues. Okay. So, how do we resolve this duplicate address issues? Suppose on this computer, currently we have enabled DHCP. So, we close, we go and then assign the static IP address to this computer 192.168.201.10 and then assign the subnet mask. So, we do not use default gateway at this point of time and then check the IP address of the PC. So, we have 192.168.201.10 and now we can ping to the router. The router IP address is 192.168.201.1. So, you can see there is communication. Suppose just to create a problem in the network, we are assigning the second computer also with the same IP address. 192.168.201.10. The second computer also we are using the same IP address. So, you can see a message pop up here that this address is already used in the network. So, this is the IP conflict. So, this being a simulator, it is not allowing you to use this IP address. But in a real network, you can assign and you get a message that IP conflict has occurred. So, we need to manually define a different unique IP address in the LAN. So, we give the IP address of 20, 192.168.201.20. So, now this computer will accept this IP address and you can check IP config. So, you have an IP address which is unique. The first computer had an IP address of 192.168.201.10, the second computer has 20. So, we should be able to ping to the default gateway which is the router 201.1. So, now both the computers are able to reach up to the router and then you can also ping to the neighbor computer ping 192.168.201.10. This belongs to the first computer. So, the first and second computer are able to communicate with each other and now to check from the second computer we are able to reach the remote network or not. So, we have to check the reachability with the command ping 202.2.0.18. This is the IP address of the Hyderabad router, public IP address of Hyderabad router. So, you will find the first packet So, there is no communication. You are able to go up to the router, but it is not taking you beyond that network. Whereas, from this computer, we were able to ping to this public IP address. It is not happening. So, we need to verify the configuration on the router now. So, let us go to the router's configuration and troubleshoot why this communication is not happening. So, this is the router's configuration. So, this is the Amaravati router. 
So, we go to the privilege mode and then check the command show IP route. So, in this routing table, we must have a default route S star. S star represents default route and it is present. Then the next thing that we have to verify is the NAT, network address translation. So, we get the command show IP NAT translation. We are not getting any output. So, translation is not happening. So, let us observe the configuration with the command show running hyphen config. So, this is a command to verify the current configuration of the router and then you have to have on the Ethernet interface IP NAT inside which is correct and then on the serial interface IP NAT outside and this is also correct and then we have all the parameters correct the default route everything is available but still they are not able to communicate remember we had done one problem that is we did not assign the default gateway see here there is no default gateway just having the IP address and subnet mask will allow communication within the LAN. These computers can communicate with each other. You cannot go to the remote network. So, just now we have seen the layer 3 issues, the default gateway is either wrongly configured or not configured, we will not be able to communicate 201.1. So, after assigning the default gateway, you will be able to communicate with the remote network. You can see here the parameters are very important the IP address, the subnet mask and the DNS server. So, it is very important to verify these parameters. Also on the second computer was not able to communicate to the remote network because of the default gateway. So, importance of default gateway is to communicate with the remote network. So, now you will be able to communicate with the remote network. Did we assign the address correctly? 192.168.201.1. This is correct. So, checking the reachability to the router is not happening. We are not able to reach the default gateway 192.168.201.10 subnet mask and then the default gateway 192.168.201.1. So, whenever the IP conflict happens, we have to shut down the interface and then bring it up. So, you can communicate now. Whenever an IP conflict happens, it is a good practice to shut down the computer or shut down the interface and enable it back. So, conflicts have to be addressed carefully. If you happen to know that the IP conflict have, has happened to a computer or a network device, it is better to shut down the Ethernet interface and enable it back. So, this is very important for troubleshooting. So, we have seen the layer 1 troubleshooting which is relating to the physical connectivity or the uh, correctness of the cable or is the cable damaged, is the jack crimped properly, is the jack loose. These are the physical connection issues for the wired networks. For the wireless networks, we have to check are we connected to the Wi-Fi router or not or whether we are connected to the access point in the network or not properly. Are we connected to the correct access point? Sometimes you are in a public place when you scan for networks, you will find a lot of networks. Are we connecting to the right access point or authentication has been successfully happening or not when we get the correct IP address from the access point. So, these are the parameters to be checked for the wireless networks at the physical layer or layer 1 network. Then the layer 2 is relating to encapsulation, speed and duplex settings which are not very common. Okay. Physical layer issues are common where you see that check the LEDs on or not on the computer, on the server, on the laptop. For smartphones, it is purely Wi-Fi. So, we check in our settings, Wi-Fi settings, whether we are connected to the correct access point or not, to the correct Wi-Fi router or not. 
whether authentication has happened successfully or not and did we get the correct IP parameters or not. So, these are the things we have to check and for layer 3 the network issues they are IP address, subnet mask, default gateway and DNS server and we need to check whether they are reachable or not all the time. So, let us verify now on this computer we want to check connectivity to the Wi-Fi network. So, we have in the when we scan for networks when we click on this network icon we get to see these various Wi-Fi options available these many different uh, Wi-Fi routers are available accessible. So, we click on the first one Wi-Fi network and click on connect. So, it is trying to establish the connectivity. So, now it shows that message as connected. So, you have the message called connected. So, it is got connected to this access point now. So, when we go to the command prompt on the computer. So, we have we were not able to ping last time. So, we check the IP config the IP parameters since it is going to give a long output we will just send more means it will show one screen at a time. So, you can verify the IP address of the local PC which is a private IP address and then there is subnet mask and then there is default gateway. But if you want to check the complete parameters then we give the command IP config slash all. This will also display the DNS parameters remember this command IP config will just display the IP settings only the IP settings IP address subnet mask and default gateway. When we give IP config slash all then we can get to see more parameters. So, now you can see here earlier we just had few parameters just that was IP address subnet mask and default gateway. Now, you can see more parameters like when was the IP address obtained through the DSCP server and how long it is going to last for one hour. What is the default gateway? What is the DHCP server IP address? And you also get to see the DNS servers which is the important ones to translate the name domain name to the IP address. These are the global DNS IP addresses and this first one 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 is managed by Google. It is a free DNS service provided by Google any organization any individual can set this as their DNS server for the name resolution purpose. So, now this from the local PC we can ping to 8.8.8.8 I am checking the reachability to my DNS server and we have access to the DNS you can see very clearly there is a reply coming from the DNS server. So, this is the successful communication from the local PC to the DNS server. Also, we can use the trace route command to verify the reachability from the local PC trace route to the DNS server. So, this is going to take a little while in the process it will display the path how far this DNS server is. In fact, you can see by using the reverse DNS by using the reverse DNS we could get to see this is the name Google public DNS google.com can you see that? 8.8.8.8 IP address is mapped to this domain name called google hyphen public hyphen dns hyphen a dot google dot com. So, this belongs to google dot com and the first hop has gone to our default gateway the very first hop from our computer our computer IP address is 192.168.43.35 and then the default gateway is 192.168.43.1. And that is why the first packet has gone to our default gateway. And then the second hop it is showing the star represents there is some hiding they are hiding this ISP will hide some IP addresses they will not publish all the information they will hide some network details. So, you can see the next device the third device is having a private IP address and then it will display this is the public IP address 109.100.16.125 it belongs to Airtel broadband this IP belongs to Airtel broadband. So, this way we get to see hop by hop we are trying to reach from our local computer to the DNS server and these many different routers are present between our local computer and the remote DNS server. So, we can see this 8 devices it has crossed from our local computer to reach the 
DNS server and still is progressing further. So, it's reached 10 hops and then finally, it will reach the destination 8.8.8.8. .8 also, there is a limitation that the trace root application cannot support beyond 30 hops. This is called as hop. First hop is the first router, second hop is the next router after the first. So, this way, this trace route is showing the number of devices we have to cross over to reach the destination. And we are in the 11th hop at this point of time and is not displaying the details. Whenever you get a star, it implies that the service provider, the ISP do not want to provide the details. So, you get a message request timed out and whereas other devices, they are displaying the information. This could belong to a multi-layer switch, this could belong to your firewall, this IP could belong to your router. Similarly, when we access internet, we just get the page and how far this destination is, we are not aware. So, by doing this trace route, we can get to know the path the packet is taking to reach the destination. So, it is 12 hops, the 13th hop, we are not getting any information. But ping is happening. If you see here, we are able to ping to the DNS server, we are getting the reply. So, sometimes you may have an issue, you will not get to see that it is reaching the correct destination. So, we can interrupt this if you want to by pressing control C. If you press control C, this process will stop and then we can carry on to the next process. Okay. So, let us stop this for a while and then we can do a trace for another domain trace route google.com. So, when you do trace route to google.com, you can see that it is able to resolve the domain name to the corresponding public IP address and then we are trying to reach that particular list. So, always even in the previous case, the first hop is always our router ISP our local ISP. This is the IP address of our default gateway and in let us give it some time, it is going to process and show us the path. In the meanwhile, let us go have a look at the various other commands that we will be using to troubleshoot. So, you can see here the various commands that are required are used to troubleshoot. So, if you are a network engineering the engineer managing a network of an organization, whenever the users have complaints, you have problems, users have problems like either internet problem or having access to the server problem or not able to print, you know various are not able to do FTP or not able to connect to the database server, various issues can happen in the network. So, when you receive a complaint from a user, how do we troubleshoot or what are the commands that will be required to troubleshoot? So, we have given a list, compiled list of commands which will be very helpful that is ping to check the reachability, whether the destination is reachable or not, is it available or not. And in the ping, we have three different kinds of output, successful communication when you get a reply from that particular destination, second one non-successful communication which gives a message called destination host unreachable. And when you get this message destination host unreachable, the request is going from your computer to the router, up to the router there is communication and the router do not have the path, the route to reach the destination. Whenever a router do not have a route to the destination, you get a message called destination host unreachable. And the third type of output in the ping is the request timed out. This is also shortly called as RTO. Request timed out is a short name represented as RTO, which is the path to the destination is available and probably the destination device is turned off or it could happen that that IP may not be available. Let us get to see what output we have now. See, you can see here, we were trying to do a trace route to google.com and we were successfully able to reach the destination 172.217.163.142. So, you can see here we have reached. In the previous case, when we tried to reach 8.8.8.8 .8 on the trace, we could not reach, but when we tra trace to google.com, we could reach from our computer to google.com in just 9 hops. So, we do not know in which place it is physically, but we could reach google.com in just 9 hops. 
So you can try this at home. You can do a trace route to various domains that you want to yahoo.com. So then again, the communication will start from the local PC trying to go hop by hop to reach where yahoo.com is, how far it is, how many routers it has to cross to reach that particular destination. So this is how we can do troubleshooting. Sometimes we may not be able to reach the destination. You do not get an output for ping, request timed out, but where is the fault? Where is the packet getting dropped or how far we are able to reach before reaching the destination? This all can be resolved with this trace route command. So ping and trace route, both these applications very useful for the network engineer, network administrator. And I normally call these two applications as simple as like if you go to your doctor, the doctor will first check using the stethoscope, right? So how important the stethoscope is for the doctor, for the network engineer, the ping and trace route are so important commands or utilities. So without these two commands, the network engineer cannot troubleshoot, cannot identify the problems, cannot rectify the problems. So apart from these two commands, we also have the other commands called net connection. The net connection is a PowerShell command. So I will show you now how to connect to the PowerShell and execute this command. But before going there, let us look at why we need this command. Suppose I want to know on a computer whether a web server is working or not. I want to know whether a web server is working or not, web service is working or not. So I give the command net connection and it should be used on a PowerShell. So let us go to the command prompt, cmd and then we are in the command prompt, give the command PowerShell. Power shell. So then the mode will change to PowerShell. So how do we know it's changed? You can see in the beginning of the command there is a keyword called PS. This PS stands for PowerShell. Okay. So now we can give the command net. It is test net connection. Sorry. Test hyphen net connection followed by the domain name. Let us suppose zoomgroup.com. So it takes a little while and show us a message. It is sending a ICMP message and you got the output. This is the command we have used. This is the command test hyphen net connection. Remember it should be used in the PowerShell and to go to PowerShell I have shown you the command and then the name of the domain you wish to check. And then it says computer name we are communicating with is so and so. The remote IP address means the remote is you are communicating with zoomgroup.com. This is the IP address of zoomgroup.com. How we are connecting through wireless Wi Fi communication? The local IP address of the computer, local computer is 192.168.43.35. Ping succeeded true means there is communication to that particular this thing. And ping reply details is how much time the packet has taken to go to that particular zoomgroup.com and come back. So you can use the same process for other domains as well, let us say google.com. So if you ping uh, to google.com, you are getting a response. So this is much faster. If the destination is very close by, it will respond quickly. So this much amount of time, 85 milliseconds taken for the computer to send the message to google.com and get back the reply. So this is another way of checking the connection. We can also check whether the web service is working on a particular domain or not through other command and from the list we have route print is just to check the local information. We can use telnet. Telnet is normally used for remote administration. You want to connect to the router, remote router, you want to connect to the remote switch to uh, configure or to make changes to the configuration, we use this. And ARP, remember we have discussed earlier, address resolution protocol. This is to map IP address to the MAC address. ARP is related with resolving the IP to MAC address. So let us run these commands and verify the output, route print, route print. This provides the local information. You can see both IPv4 and IPv6. Remember IPv6 is important and we will be able to uh, use this very frequently in the future. 
So, this is the information, the IP address of the computer, the network ID and the broadcast ID. Every time you assign an IP address, there will be three parameters available in this output called route print and it also displays the default gateway. So, you have 0 .0 0.0.0.0, this is default gate. If you are able to get internet, it is because you have a default route. Default route has to be configured both on the router as well as on the local device. When you set the default gateway in the TCP IP properties, this parameter will be displayed. So, route print is for local verification only. And then telnet, I give telnet google.com space 80. So, this is 80 is a port number. So, you can see there is a cursor blinking. That means this is successful communication. It is successful communication. So, to stop this, you press control C. So, you can see the message HTTP protocol, bad request, content length, so and so. So, it is showing that the connection was established. It is another matter that we could not see the page because you want to see the web page, we must use a web browser. But we are using telnet. Let us suppose you have a computer without, without a browser. You do not have a browser on your computer and you want to check whether the web server is working or not. So, how do we do it? So, we can just do telnet followed by the domain name space port number 80. This will display this blank page with a blinking cursor implies that there is a connection established to the web page or web server. So, you press control C to come back to the command prompt. So, telnet can be used with I can also check for example, zoomgroup.com. So, it shows a, a blank page and the cursor is blinking means we have established a connection to the web server. So, to stop this, we go to control C, come back to this. But if you just give, just telnet, it does not work because telnet is not enabled by default. And then by doing all this, the last command that we want to verify is the ARP just give ARP hyphen A. So, this will display the various information relating to the local IP address of the computer and its corresponding MAC addresses. Okay. So, these are the various commands that we have checked today for troubleshooting purpose and this is very important for the network engineer to resolve the problems in the network. So, we will continue in the next session about the future of internet by using the technologies like cloud and IoT. That will be our session for the next topic. Thank you. Hi friends, Yanta Pedda Prayana Maina Vokkarukutone Modala Uttundi. Yanta Pedda Prayana Maina Vokkarukutone Modala Uttundi. Yanta Pedda Kavya Maina Chinna Aksharantone Modala Uttundi. Yanta Pedda Asaya Maina Vokkarukutone Modala Uttundi. Randi, Bhavita Vepo Adugu Mundi Kettam. Aspashtata Nunchi, Spashtata Vepo. Anuman and Chi, Samadhan of Vipo. Chika Tinanchi, Veliku Vipo. Me Bavita, me Alochan alone. Me Bavita, me Vyuhan Lundi. Me Bavita, me Chetulu. Unlocks the uncertainties in your mind. Talks about career opportunities. Insight about industry expectations. Empowers you to take effective decisions. Transforms you into a true leader. You are Prasthana, Twaralo, me city lo.
ఈ నిరుద్యోగ వృత్తి అనేది చాలా అవసరం మాకు ఈ పథకాన్ని అమలు చేయడం చాలా హ్యాపీగా ఉంది మాకు ఈ నిరుద్యోగ వృత్తి వల్ల మాకు మంచి అవకాశం కల్పించినట్టుగా ఉంటుంది నెలకి థౌజండ్ రూపీస్ ఇవ్వడం వల్ల ఇంటి మీద డిపెండ్ అయ్యి వేటికైనా అప్లై చేసుకోవడాలు ఇలాంటి ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ అవి లేకుండా మన అంతటా మనం వేటికైనా అప్లై చేసుకోవడం అనేది ఒక మంచి ఉద్దేశం ఇలాంటి వాటిని ఇంకా ఎంకరేజ్ చేయాలి అని నేను కోరుకుంటున్నాను నిరుద్యోగులైన యువతని నిరుద్యోగ ద్వారా నెలకు వెయ్యి రూపాయలు ఇస్తూ అయిన యువకులందరూ కూడా రేపు రోజు నిరుత్సాహపడకుండా ఇంకా ఇంకా వారి నైపుణ్యాన్ని పెంచుకుంటూ ఎప్పటికైనా సరే వాళ్ళు ఉన్నత విద్య కానీ ఉన్నత శిఖరానికి ఎదగాలని కోరుకుంటూ ఏమనేస్తూ అనే పథకం ద్వారా విద్యార్థులను కానీ నిరుద్యోగులను ఆదుకుంటున్నారు నెట్ ఎగ్జామ్ సెట్ ఎగ్జామ్ కు కనీసం అప్లై చేయాలని డబ్బులు లేని పరిస్థితి మాది ఇప్పుడు అలాంటి సమయంలో నిరుద్యోగ గుర్తి పెట్టడం వల్ల మాకు అప్లై చేసుకోవడానికి కానీ ఇదంత మాకు చాలా సంతోషమైన విషయం గ్రామీణ ప్రాంతాల నుంచి వచ్చి గవర్నమెంట్ పథకాల ద్వారా చదువుకునేటువంటి వ్యక్తులకు ఈ నిరుద్యోగ పూర్తి నారా చంద్రబాబు నాయుడు గారు ప్రవేశపెట్టడం వల్ల మా అందరికీ చాలా సంతోషమైన విషయము ప్రభుత్వ పాఠశాలలో విద్యార్థులకు ప్రపంచ స్థాయి విద్య అందితే ఎలా ఉంటుంది ఎలిమెంటరీ స్కూల్లో కాన్వెంట్ చదువులు బోధిస్తే ఏ తల్లిదండ్రులకైనా అంతకన్నా కావాల్సిందే ఉంది సరిగ్గా అమరావతి గ్రామాల్లో అదే జరుగుతోంది రాజధాని గ్రామాల్లోని పిల్లలకు ప్రపంచ స్థాయి విద్యను అందించే దిశగా ప్రభుత్వం అడుగులు వేస్తుంది చదువుకు దూరంగా ఉంటున్న చిన్నారులను బడిబాట పట్టిస్తుంది అందుకోసం ప్రయోగాత్మకంగా ప్రవేశపెట్టిన పాఠశాలలే ఆనందలహరి అభ్యాసన స్కూళ్లు అమరావతికి కాంక్రీటు పునాదులే కాదు భవిష్యత్తు తరానికి కూడా బలమైన పునాదులు వేయాలని ప్రభుత్వం కోరుకుంటుంది అందుకే రాజధాని గ్రామాల్లో ప్రాథమిక విద్యపై ప్రత్యేక దృష్టి పెట్టింది ప్రైవేటు స్కూళ్లను తలదన్నేలా ఆనందలహరి అభ్యాసన పేరిట ప్రాథమిక స్కూళ్లను తీర్చిదిద్దుతోంది నేటి చిన్నారులే రేపటి పౌరులు అమరావతి ఆశా కిరణాలు అని బలంగా నమ్ముతున్న ప్రభుత్వం అందుకు అనుగుణంగా ప్రాథమిక విద్యలో గుణాత్మకమైన మార్పులు తీసుకొస్తోంది ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ రాజధాని అమరావతిలోని సాకమూరు ప్రాథమిక పాఠశాల ప్రైవేటు స్కూళ్లకు దీటుగా ముస్తాబైంది సువిశాలమైన ప్రాంగణం కలర్ఫుల్ క్లాస్ రూములు ప్రత్యేక వసతులు కలిగిన తరగతి గదులు దారాళమైన వెలుతురు ప్రత్యేక బల్లలు చాపలు బోధనా సామాగ్రి పెట్టుకోవడానికి వారికి అందే ఎత్తులో ట్రేలు బ్లాక్ బోర్డులు బడి చుట్టూ ఆటస్థలం ఇలా ఉంటే ఏ స్కూలుకైనా ఇంతకన్నా ఏం కావాలి హరి వచ్చిన కానీ ఆటలు పాటలు ట్యాబులు కంప్యూటర్లు కూడా వచ్చేసింది ఈ స్కూల్కి రావటం వల్ల సంతోషంగా ఉంది మాకు బొమ్మలు అవన్నీ చూస్తుంటే మేము కూడా నేర్చుకుంటున్నాం ఫస్ట్ క్లాస్ నుండి ఏడు చదువుతున్నాం రోజు భోజనం బాగుంటుంది వారం వారం ఎగ్ కూడా ఇస్తున్నారు పెద్ద అయినాక టీచర్ అవ్వాలనుకుంటున్నాను నాకు చెప్తే నేను మర్చిపోతాను నాకు బోధిస్తే నేను గుర్తుంచుకుంటాను నాతో చేయిస్తే నేను నేర్చుకుంటాను అన్న బెంజమిన్ ఫ్రాంక్లిన్ సూక్తి ఆదర్శంగా రిషి వ్యాలీ ప్రాథమిక పాఠశాలల్లో అమలవుతున్న బహుళ తరగతి బహుళ స్థాయి బోధనను సాంకేతికతను ప్రభుత్వం రాజధానికి తీసుకొచ్చింది ఎంజిఎంఎల్ బోధన పద్ధతిలో ఆనందలహరి స్కూళ్లు చిన్నారుల్లో ఆనందాన్ని నింపుతున్నాయి ఈ స్కూల్లో చదువు చెప్పే ఉపాధ్యాయులకు ప్రపంచ స్థాయి విద్యా సంస్థ రిషి వ్యాలీ స్కూల్ ఆధ్వర్యంలో శిక్షణ ఇచ్చారు రెండు వేల పదిహేడులో 
ఎంజీఎంఎల్ బోధనా పద్దతిపై నూట ఎనిమిది మంది మాస్టర్ కోచ్లకు నూట నాలుగు మంది డెమో పాఠశాల ఉపాధ్యాయులకు చిత్తూరు జిల్లా మదనపల్లిలోని రిషి వ్యాలీ స్కూల్లో పది రోజుల పాటు శిక్షణా శిబిరం జరిగింది ప్రాథమిక విద్యను బలోపేతం చేసేందుకు ఈ విధానం ఎంతగానో ఉపకరిస్తుందని ప్రభుత్వం భావిస్తోంది గత ఏడాది వరకు ఒకటి రెండు తరగతులకే పరిమితమైన ఆనందలహరి ప్రోగ్రాంను ఇప్పుడు ఐదో తరగతి వరకు పొడిగించింది ప్రభుత్వం మా పాఠశాల గత సంవత్సరంలోనే ఆలా స్కూల్కి ఎంపికైందండి ఆలా స్కూల్ అంటే ఆనందలహరి అండి ఆటలతో పాటలతో పిల్లలు చక్కగా రాయడం చదవడం పాటలు పాడడం యాక్టివ్గా చేయగలుగుతున్నారండి దానికి ఫోర్ ట్యాబ్స్ ఉంటాయి ఒకటి రెండు తరగతులకి లాస్ట్ ఇయర్ ఇచ్చారండి ఈ సంవత్సరం మూడో తరగతి నాలుగో తరగతి ఏ తరగతి కూడా రాబోతుందండి ఈ సంవత్సరం ఒకటో తరగతికి ఇంగ్లీష్ మీడియం కూడా వచ్చిందండి ఇదే స్కూల్కి రాష్ట్రం మొత్తం ఒక వెయ్యి మూడు వందల నలభై రెండు స్కూళ్లలో మల్టీ గ్రేడ్ మల్టీ లెవెల్ ఎంజీఎంఎల్ విధానం అమలు చేస్తున్నా రాజధాని స్కూళ్ల విషయంలో ప్రభుత్వం మరింత శ్రద్ధ తీసుకుంటుంది ఆనందలహరి అనే కార్యక్రమం పెట్టారు ఇది చక్కగా పిల్లలు కూడా ఎంతో ఆనందంగా ఆడుతూ పాడుతూ నేర్చుకుంటున్నారు ఈ రాజధాని రాకముందు ఇదేం జరగలేదండి ఈ రాజధాని వచ్చిన తర్వాత నుంచే ఆనందలహరి కార్యక్రమం ఒకటి కొత్తగా ఈ సంవత్సరం నుంచే ఓటో తరగతిలో ఇంగ్లీష్ మీడియం స్కూల్ కూడా ఓటో తరగతి నుంచే మేము ఓపెన్ చేయడం జరిగింది ఇందులో గ్రామస్తులు కూడా చాలా సంతోషంగా ఉన్నారు రాజధాని రాకముందు పిల్లలు కొద్దిగా అంత ఎక్కువ వచ్చేవాళ్ళు కాదు ఈ రాజధాని వచ్చిన తర్వాత గవర్నమెంట్ కూడా ఈ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ మీద బాగా దృష్టి సారించి ఈ ఆందలహరి కార్యక్రమాలని ఇంగ్లీష్ మీడియం స్కూల్స్ ఇవన్నీ కట్టబట్టి ఎన్రోల్మెంట్ కూడా బాగా పెరిగి బాగా చక్కగా ఉంది బోధనా పద్ధతి రిషి వ్యాలీ స్కూళ్ళది అయినప్పటికీ బోధించే పాఠ్యాంశాలు మాత్రం రాష్ట్ర విద్యా పరిశోధన శిక్షణ సంస్థ రూపొందించినవే కంప్యూటర్ ట్యాబ్లు కార్డుల విధానం ద్వారా పిల్లల్లో చదువుకోవాలన్న ఆసక్తిని అంతకంతకు పెంచుతోంది నాణ్యమైన విద్యే కాదు పోషకాలతో కూడిన భోజనాన్ని విద్యార్థులకు అందిస్తుంది ప్రభుత్వం పైసా ఖర్చు లేకుండా సొంతూరులోనే ప్రపంచ స్థాయి విద్యను అందిస్తోంది అమరావతి భావితరాల భవితవ్యానికి ఇప్పటి నుంచే గట్టి పునాది వేస్తోంది కాలం మారుతోంది ప్రతి విషయంలోనూ టెక్నాలజీ అవసరం పెరిగిపోతోంది ప్రపంచమే అరచేతిలో ఇమిడిపోతోంది ఈ క్రమంలో సమాచార సేకరణ ఎంత ముఖ్యమో దాని భద్రత కూడా అంతే ముఖ్యం అందుకే సైబర్ సెక్యూరిటీకి ప్రాధాన్యం పెరిగింది సాంకేతిక యుగంలో వ్యక్తిగత సమాచార భద్రత అత్యవసరం సామాన్యులకే ఇలాంటి పరిస్థితి ఉంటే ఇక ప్రభుత్వాలకు కార్పొరేట్ సమాచారానికి ఎంత రక్షణ అవసరమో ఆలోచించండి అతిపెద్ద ఈ గవర్నెన్స్ వ్యవస్థను నడుపుతున్న ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ ఆధార్ ద్వారా ప్రభుత్వ పథకాలు ప్రజలకు అందించడంలో ఆదర్శవంతంగా నిలుస్తోంది ఏపీఎస్ఆర్డిహెచ్ నుంచి మీ సేవ ఈ ప్రగతి సిటిజన్ ఫ్రెండ్లీ సర్వీసెస్ ఆఫ్ ట్రాన్స్పోర్ట్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ సిఎఫ్ఎస్టి కంప్యూటర్ ఎయిడెడ్ అడ్మినిస్ట్రేషన్ ఆఫ్ రిజిస్ట్రేషన్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ సిఏఆర్డి వంటి ఎన్నో ఈ గవర్నెన్స్ వ్యవస్థలు ప్రజలకు అందుబాటులో ఉన్నాయి దేశంలోనే తొలిసారి రియల్ టైం గవర్నెన్స్ ని అమల్లోకి తెచ్చింది ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ ప్రభుత్వం ప్రజలకు వారధిగా నిలిచిన ఇంతటి విస్తృత సమాచార వ్యవస్థల్ని ప్రమాదాలు వాటిల్లకుండా కాపాడుకోవడం చాలా ముఖ్యం అందుకే ప్రపంచంలోనే అత్యుత్తమ సెక్యూరిటీ ఆపరేషన్ సెంటర్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ లో ఆవిర్భవిస్తోంది
ಅದೆ ಆಂಧ್ರ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಸೈಬರ್ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಆಪರೇಷನ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಎಪಿಸಿ ಎಸ್ಒಸಿ ಆಂಧ್ರ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಸರ್ವಿಸಸ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಎಪಿಟಿಎಸ್ ಟೆಕ್ ಮಹೀಂದ್ರಾ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆತೋ ಕಲಸಿ ಸೈಬರ್ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಆಪರೇಷನ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ನೇ ಅತ್ಯಾಧುನಿಕಂಗಾ ತೀರ್ಚಿದಿದ್ದಿಂದಿ ಪ್ರಭುತ್ವ ಆಸ್ತುಲು ಸದುಪಾಯಾಲಕು ಸಂಬಂಧಿಂಚಿನ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಡೇಟಾ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಇತರ ಪ್ರಭುತ್ವ ಶಾಖಲಕು ಸಂಬಂಧಿಂಚಿನ ಸಮಾಚಾರಾನ್ನಿ ಎಪಿಸಿ ಎಸ್ಒಸಿ ಎಪ್ಪಟಿಕಪ್ಪುಡು ಪರಿಯವೇಕ್ಷಿಸ್ತು ಉಂಟುಂದಿ वकटी, साइबर मुप्पुपै निगा, विस्लेशन, घटना निर्वहन, रेंडु, भद्रता वनरुलु, परिकराल निर्वहन, मूडु, विपत्तु निर्धारन, निर्वहन सेवलु, नालुगु, ब्रांड परियवेक्षन, रक्षन सेवलु, इनालुगु विभागाल द्वारा, पोंचिवुन्न नेट्वर्क मैनेजमेंट, एक्स्टर्नल थ्रेट फीड्स, ब्रांड प्रोटेक्षन वंटी सांखेतिक परिग्ञानंतो अंतर्जातिय प्रमानालनी पोंदु पर्चुकोंदी APC SOC अनेदी साइबर भद्रतकु सम्मन्धिंचिन वक समीकृत निर्मान व्यवस्था सांखेतिक परंगाने प्रमादालनु पसिगट्टडं, प्रमादालनु मुंदे ग्रहिंचडं, प्रमादालनु निवारिंचडं इए मूडु कीलक दस्यल्लो अथि विलुवैन समाचारानिकी संपूर्न भद्रत कल्पिस्तुंदी APC SOC APC SOC सेवल द्वारा Enterprise, IT आस्तुल नियंत्रनलो गोप्यता समग्रता उन्टाई विनियोगदारुल भद्रता अवसरालनु तीर्चडनलो विविधरकाल सेवलो अंधिस्तुंदी इक चट्टबध्धत कोसों यप्पटिकप्पुडु लोग समाचारों अंदुबाटलो � रैंसम वेर प्रयोगालतो कीलक समाचारालनी द्वंगलीं चेंदुकु मामुलु हैकरले कादु स्यत्रु देश्यालु कूड निरंतर कुट्रलु चेस्तुने उन्टाई सांकेतिकतनु वाडणनलो अंधरिकंटे मुंदुन्न आंधर प्रदेश प्रभुत्वं APC SOC एर पटुतो मरो अडुगु मुंदु केसिंदी प्रजावसरालकु अत्याधुनिक सांकेतिक भद्रतनु कल्पिंचे साइबर सेक्यूरिटी ओपरेशन सेंटर इतर रास्ट्राल प्रभुत्वालु आर्धिक आंधर प्रदेश मुख्य मंत्री स्री नारा चंद्रवाबु नायुडी दार्षनिकता IT मंत्री स्री नारा लोकेश कार्य सीलता रास्ट्रान्नी दुर्भेध्यमयन सैबर भद्रता वलयंगा मारुस्तुनाई प्रजा समाचारान्नी कम्प्यूटरी करिंचडम उकयत्तैते तगि मॉन कृष्णा पोपुरी साइड इंजीनियर मैकेनिकल प्रोजेक्ट लो ऑन माउंटेन्स में मतलब ब्रेक जैसी तीस को चिकट डंप यार्ड लो पास था हम मिशनरीज बेटी 400 टू 500 डायमेंट साइज़ लो ब्रेक जैसी बोन क्रशर लो माना कावल सी ना डायमेंशंस लो कांक्रीट हो चुकी अतीस कुछ इन प्रोडक्ट ने वेहिकल्स को लोड चेसी माना बैचिंग प्लांट्स की कांक्रीट लेवल्स कावल्स ना तो दैनिक सप्लाई चास्ता हूँ आ प्लांट्स में जी मिक्स आई डैम के लिए आ बेंस द्वारा आगे लिफ्ट आई थी इल्ली आ साइलो लो पड़ी पे जी साइलो लो पड़ी इन तरह तक कड़ा चिलिंग प्लांट्स होने पे ये फाइ बिल्डिंग तरवाता आकर नुन्ची आ मेटल न प्लांट सप्लाई जास्ता हूँ आकर नुन्ची प्लांट आ मटेरियल टीस कोन कांक्रीट आने मिक्स चेस दी ये तो अच्छे 
మంది ఫుల్లీ ఆటోమేటెడ్ బ్యాచింగ్ ప్లాంట్స్ అండి శాండ్ అగ్రిగేట్ సిమెంట్ ఐస్ యాడ్ మిక్సర్ అవన్నీ కూడా క్వాంటిటీస్ మనం ఎంటర్ చేయగానే ఆటోమేటిక్ మనం బ్యాచ్ అయిపోతుంది మిక్సర్ లోకి వెళ్ళి మిక్సింగ్ అయిపోయిన తర్వాత త్రూ యాజ్టర్ మనకి సైట్కి వెళ్ళిపోతుంది పర్ డే ఇప్పుడు వచ్చి స్పిల్ వేలో ఫోర్ థౌసండ్ క్యూబిక్ మీటర్స్ వస్తున్నాయి అది కాక స్పిల్ ఛానల్ మళ్ళీ ఫోర్ థౌసండ్ త్రీ థౌసండ్ క్వాంటిటీస్ అవుతున్నాయి ఓవరాల్గా స్పిల్ వేకి వచ్చి మనకు అంతా కూడా ఫుల్లీ టెంపరేచర్ కూల్డ్ కాంక్రీట్ కాబట్టి ఈ బ్యాచింగ్ ప్లాంట్స్ నుంచి వెళ్తూ ఉంటుంది టెంపరేచర్ హైలో ఉంటే కానీ మనకి ఆటోమేటిక్గా క్రాక్స్ వస్తాయి క్రాక్స్ ఏమి ఉండకూడదు కాబట్టి మొత్తం వాటర్ బాడీ స్ట్రక్చర్ కూడా మొత్తం ఏం ప్రూఫ్ ఉండకుండా హై కాంక్రీట్ గ్రేట్ కాంక్రీట్ యూస్ చేస్తున్నాయి ఈ సైడ్లో నిరంతరం శ్రమించేవాణ్ణి చూసి ఓటమి కూడా భయపడుతుంది ఈ ప్రపంచంలో ఉన్న సకల శక్తి నీలోనే ఉంది స్వామి వివేకానంద